Ever since I was really, really small, I've drawn. I always thought I wanted to go into fashion design. I just know I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make dresses, I'm gonna draw dresses. Going into college, I was like, oh, I just, I just like to draw. <laughs> and I was like, so I'm an illustrator. Now, as I've made painting a career, it used to be my escape and it's kind of hard to differentiate. It's nice having different aspects where you can still kind of escape, where this is seen as more work, and then you can kind of escape and do your own fun things. Aesthetically, they're very, very different things when I draw compared to what I paint with realism. I draw some weird stuff, <laughs> you know? And it's nice just to be able to have some, uh, just something different to do. It's kind of weird how things have and flow like that, though. My name is Candy Yuan Guo, and I am an artist and a mother based out of Austin, Texas. I was born in Taipei, Taiwan. We moved to the United States around when I was four or five. Eventually, we moved to Harlingen, Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. We were about 20 minutes from Brownsville, which is literally the southernmost tip of Texas. That was definitely an interesting childhood growing up. And I realized that I have now lived in Austin longer than in my hometown, which is a really wild concept to me. I think creativity is in all of us. Because of that, depending on how much you hone it and how much you encourage it and practice it, there's different levels that you can bring your creativity. I had Always wanted to learn how to spray paint, but it was a very daunting thing. I actually had some pieces on consignment with a local store that sold spray paint, but I never felt comfortable enough even to go in to be like, hi, hello, show me the things to do. <laughs> it's weird learning how to do murals because you, A, need the space to do it, and you also have to be very comfortable with being not good at it in a very public setting for a very long time as you're learning. The first mural I ever did, I went out to Castle Hill with two other artists, Fish and Grimm. Castle Hill was the old foundations of a building turned into a public park for public art. We went out there and they kind of showed me the ropes and kind of just went from there. Becoming a parent is a life-changing experience. Making the choice to have children, particularly for women, is often considered a death sentence for one's artistic career, yet it hasn't been for you. You are an example that it is possible to be a successful artist and a mother. What have you learned? Becoming a parent has taught me a lot. It's taught me more about myself, than anything. We hadn't planned on having Atticus. We made the choice to have her, and right off the bat, we decided we didn't want that to change the trajectory of what we wanted to do with our lives. It hasn't always been easy, but it's also, I think as cliche as it sounds, one of the most rewarding things I've done. But it changes you as a person. For me, the biggest part was diving into a lot of self-reflection of seeing her grow up and trying to understand why I am the way I am and reflecting back on my own upbringing and different ways that it's influenced me being a parent. I think being a creative, there's really no, there's no blueprint for it. Um, most days, honestly, it feels strange hearing people go, man, you guys must be doing a wonderful job. Like it looks like you guys, cause on the inside we're like, I, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know if that's most parents. Um, but I think it's just important to show her that we're pursuing something outside of the roles that she already understands us to be, which is you know, her mom and her dad. For me, it's important that she doesn't grow up with the stigma of limiting herself to thinking that a creative career path isn't a viable career path. Because obviously, 
we're doing it. We're just working our way through and taking it one day at a time. And there's little moments where in all the uncertainty that it really becomes clear for us that maybe we are doing the right thing. I think the other day we were talking about a job and she was like, well, let's go do it. She was like, let's go paint that wall. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and she's literally growing up in the life. And as someone who grew up in a very traditional household, um, coming from a more conservative culture, I would say, I don't think public art was something that my parents ever had in mind for their daughter to eventually do as a career. But they've been very supportive um, since I've been pursuing it. I think it's just great that already with full confidence my daughter says that she is an artist it took me damn near 30 years before i felt comfortable saying i'm candy and i am an artist that to me in and of itself is is worth it i start off creating at home now with my designs but eventually i take it out into the public to share with people the process and the reasoning behind why i'm painting it and it's always encouraging because People are super engaged and interested and they want to know different techniques and how do you even do that and what's the story and that's what it is. You're out there telling stories. There's a responsibility when you're creating public art because you're making an image that's not just seen by your eyes, it's being seen and interpreted by the whole public. We want to be very conscious of the work that we put out into the world and sometimes the message either gets lost or gets convoluted and that's why it's so important to be engaged with the community you're painting in and to understand the nuances of what makes that specific area special but <laughs> you still have to do it in a way where it's it draws your eye in it's not so abrasive that it discourages the public it's a very very fine balance and it's nice to, to get feedback from people when they can relate or when you, you know, are able to show them a point of view that they've never considered before. With anything, there's a dangerous element of it being capitalized upon. And I think with public art is so important to not only have something that is aesthetically pleasing because we're constantly as a society being sold something. Um, but I think it's important to have public art that speaks on issues or tells a story or can educate the public and bring awareness to different things. Because it's one thing to have a pretty picture and I think it's another to have an image that really impacts a community. I think an environmentally just future looks like a world where everyone has the same capability to advocate for a clean environment, clean water, clean soil, to live in and to have access to public green spaces and to have access to bountiful food. I think public gardens should be a thing. I think every lawn should be producing fruits and vegetables. If everyone just had, you know, pollinating plants or, I, I just think it would be neat if the world was a garden. So my mural design for Houston Tillotson encompasses honestly a lot of imagery. It speaks on the social and environmental issues that Austin has faced for decades with redlining and, and tank farms and environmental hazards, especially on the east side where it is predominantly people of color and minority communities. There have been numerous fights by a lot of local organizations um, to bring light to these issues and to fight for justices for the East Austin communities. And we wanted to pay homage to a lot of these causes and to paint a picture literally of a better future for East Austin. I think as the world becomes more conscious of the impact that we as humans have on the environment, it's more and more important for us as people to highlight different issues in different ways that we can help and also just to, just to bring a ray of hope. In the imagery, we have a woman of color that was very much an intentional choice. I believe that Mother Nature, she is of the earth, and it makes sense that she is a woman of color. Yeah, we come from the earth, we bring life. She is holding up 
literally the embodiment of life in her hands and it's new soil with new growth. To her back, we are highlighting some of the environmental issues that have plagued the east side. The tank farms, pollution, we have her facing that side and the colors are desaturated, but through the archway, we see a sunrise and the wall faces west, so the archway opens up like you're looking through the wall into a new morning, a new dawn for the day, and she is passing on the life to young baby hands. It's, you know, the hope for the future, the hope to do better for future generations. Um, but beneath them, you have portrayals of, you know, just lush vegetation. There's an abundance of food. There's no food scarcity, which is, you know, we still have food deserts in East Austin. I don't know if people know that. Um, and there's a single protester straight down the middle of the composition. And she's holding a sign that says East Austin. It's powerful to show that Sometimes all it takes is the one voice and it doesn't necessarily feel like you're doing much when you're a voice shouting into the void, but it doesn't, you know, doesn't start until the one person does. So I think it was important to show the solidarity of someone voicing and fighting for the cause. And it was also intentional due to the history of Houston Tillotson, I wanted women portrayed in this mural. Powerful women in imagery and public art is important. I don't think that we are just pretty faces. We're mothers, we're creators, we're artists. We grieve, we hope. We're not just here to look good. <laughs>